Um, you know, it is something, I know that, you know, it is something that we repeat it over and over and over again. And, uh, you know, um, you know, as, as I have been saying consistently, uh, that Islam is a peaceful religion. Islam is a peaceful religion. But we have to say, it is not pacifist. It is peaceful, but not pacifist. There is a difference. The Quran says, do not commit aggression, or the meaning, the general meaning of what the Quran says, is do not commit aggression because Allah does not love the aggressors. Okay? Don't commit aggression because Allah does not love the aggressors. But, on the other hand, Islam does tell us and orders us and instructs us that if we are attacked, if our lands are occupied, if our homes, our families are attacked, then we are duty bound by the religion to defend ourselves. We are duty bound to do that. It is not allowed for us to just merely sit by and let such tyranny and oppression take place. Okay, in fact the Quran says, what is wrong with you that you don't struggle in the path of God, you know, and you don't fight, when there are men and women and children who are ill-treated and weak and oppressed, who are crying out for the help of God. But even, even when we fight, we have strict rules. And amongst those strict rules is that we are not allowed to target women, children. There wasn't a term for what we call civilians. But the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi talked about, you know, the workers in the fields. That's the equivalent, really. I mean, essentially what we find is that Islam is making a clear distinction between the actual fighters, the competents, and those people who are non-combatants, the people who are not fighting. So to target those people who are not fighters, then that is not allowed. The Qur'an says, fight those who fight you. So this type of... Uh, uh, you know, this type of thing of blowing up women and children and targeting, you know, what we could call these days civilian targets, brothers and sisters, the statements of the Prophet are very clear. Okay? Um, and so, my brothers and sisters, you know, I think this is just, you know, again, for clarification about that matter. So, what is the purpose of following any religion? Okay? What is the purpose of following? Everyone has a religion. There is no human being on this planet ever who did not have a religion. The problem is, when we say the word religion, we automatically think in our mind a narrow secularist definition of what religion is. We usually think Hinduism, Islam, Judaism, Christianity, Buddhism. But really, we don't have this term in Arabic. What we have is deen. Deen means way of life. And everybody has a way of life. Everybody has a set of values through which and by which they make sense of the world. It's impossible that you don't have some set of values through which and by which you make sense of the world. Everyone has that. Even an atheist has it. Humanists have it. In fact, it's interesting that I've actually been involved in some religious seminars and discussions to children and in those religious seminars humanists have been involved <laughs> because they actually look at their ideas as a type of philosophy a way of explaining things so in the broader sense of the world it is religion and everyone has religion religion is what you use to make sense of the world around you okay that's what you use that's all it is everyone has a way of life so you can't avoid it okay you can't. And everyone has a God or gods. Because your God is the thing that you believe is going to give you what you need and what you want. Your God is the thing that you believe is going to give you what you need and what you want. If you think money is going to make you happy and give you what you need and what you want in life, money is your God. Yes. If you think looking like a supermodel, right? is what is going to give you success and happiness in life, it's your God. Right? 
If you think being good at rugby, right, or being good at sports or whatever, and having a, a body like I don't know whatever, okay, if you think that's what's going to make you happy and give you success in life in a real sense, that's your God. Everybody has a God. Everybody has something they believe is going to give them what they want and what they need. The real question is this. Of all the things that we worship and all the religions that we follow, which God really has the capability to give us what we want and what we need? In other words, of all the gods that human beings worship and everyone worships something, which one is really worthy of being worshipped? And this is the question that Islam proposes an answer to. That the only one that is truly worthy of being worshipped is the one who has created all things. And every human being actually already knows that. They already know it. Everybody knows it. It's just that they have forgotten. And you know there is a time when they remember. Everybody remembers. You know they say, they have a saying, there are no atheists in foxholes. You know, what, you know what a foxhole is? Yeah? You know when the soldier, you know when the bombs start coming and they dig a hole in the ground to hide in it? That's called a foxhole. You don't have atheists in foxholes. Right? Suddenly it's, oh God save me, oh God help me. And suddenly these people have absolute, total faith in God. The Quran gives an example like that. It gives the example of a boat that is on the sea. And then when the boat is on the sea, the waves start getting higher and higher. And as the Qur'an describes it, the waves are like the roof of a tent. This is how the waves are crashing down. So when the people lose their faith in their captain, he got washed overboard, so he's not going to save us. And then as the boat starts to break up, they lose their faith in science and technology. Right? They might start saying, mummy, but mummy's not there and she's not going to help them. Right? They've already forgotten about all their idols, they've forgotten about their money, they've forgotten about, you know, being an American citizen and passport holder, because that's George Bush isn't going to come and save them, right? Okay, so suddenly all of the things they worshipped and put their faith and trust in is gone. And then you will find the human being from the depths of their being, a knowledge that is deep down in themselves, they call out to that one power, that being they know, has the ability to rescue them from their predicament. It's not the name that's important. It's the acknowledgement that this being exists that has the power and that is the deep down knowledge that every human being has that truly that this being alone is worthy of worship. Because the reality is all of those things that you put your faith and trust in ultimately were useless. And the only one that really you recognized at the end had that power and ability to help you was the one that has control over all the affairs of the universe. This is a type of instinctive, natural knowledge that every human being has.